Argos Lab live build today. Hello, Sige from Argos Labs. Hey, Avis, how are you? I'm so glad to have you back here. We have a lot of people wanting to see the product in action. This is low code Python, the best tool you'll see for that out in the market. CK, we saw a lot of Argos Labs yesterday and we have loads of questions and I want to welcome all the viewers out there. When you have a question to CK or Argos Lab, just post them in the chat. I'll collect them in chunks and then I'll make sure that we answer every one of you. We have Autobase in the chat. Hello, Autobase. Nice to see you. A. Sullivan, a regular viewer for, of this channel. Hey, A. Sullivan, he's watching from just outside Dublin in Ireland. CK, where are you again? I'm located in San Jose, California. That's nice. We can sit in different parts of the world and seeing what uh, what we can do with code. And maybe I should say no code or low code. Can you explain to us what Argos Labs is? Sure. Okay, great. Uh, so thank you, Anders, and thank you, everyone, for uh, watching. I'm really excited to uh, give you the uh, overview of a uh, platform. So low-code Python is actually a Python, but it's low-code. So we basically built a structure on top of Python to make Python low-code. So let me just uh, give you a quick um, view of our low-code studio. Local tool usually come with to a toolbox and we have these toolbox, right? This toolbox has all these building blocks. Um, and <clears throat> we mainly focus on business process intelligent automation. So we have building blocks like Excel, PDF, and we have uh, Google, solutions like these. All these building blocks are just Python solutions. And then what we did was we have this SDK, which is called POT SDK, which stands for Python to operations tool set. So Python to operations tool set. So you know Python and operations are right here, operations. So we have POT SDK and which comes with five templates and three utilities. And it actually comes with a very extensive detailed documentation available from GitHub. Following these nine steps, you can actually build your own toolbox. Toolbox is fully customizable from your Python solution. Any Python solutions can be added to your toolbox by using POT SDK. So that's a uh, local Python. And uh, for me, as I don't really like code because uh, it takes a long time writing these endless line of code and I'm not really good at it. I have to Google a lot all the time on this. So could this uh, prevent me or could this avoid having uh, me to code and just use drag and drop all the time or do I still need a little bit of Python knowledge you think? Well, you do not need knowledge about Python at all to build your automation scenario. Again, let me give you a quick view of our studio. It's a local tool. <clears throat> so as you expect, everything is drag and drop. So maybe you want to start your automation by monitoring a folder and the folder you come here and basically you pick a folder and uh, uh, just put this parameter here. If you want to monitor multiple folders, you can do that. If you want to search for a specific um, file, you can actually do wildcard PDF. Well, wildcard PDF, maybe, you know, technically speaking, that may be a coding, but then you probably, you can do that. And I like this feature, CK, just to interrupt <laughs> you, I like this feature where I can select multiple folders at once, where I can just add them dynamically. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that feature. I wish um, a lot of other uh, vendors out there had the same uh, back when I developed, uh, uh, yeah, in the, right. in the past. And 
you, immediately after monitoring a folder, what would you like to do? Maybe you want to read your PDF using some AI technology and Google has, okay. Of course you have to have a credential file from Google, but once you have that, basically pick your operation. I mean, what you want to do and uh, OCR this time. An image file is coming directly from here because I already have a CSV. I can actually specify the file path here and then out output. You can have the output as a string, I mean, character strings, CSV format, or text file, CSV file. So uh, it's really easy, super easy to start and finish building your automation scenario. Cool, and how would that look? Just a very low level question. If I had to use the file from folder monitor in the, in the input in the Google Vision API, what should I then write? Okay, so now, when you um, uncheck uh, CSV, so a folder monitor, it, it, what you, you can get is, there's always a question mark here. Any tools we have, question mark here. Going to this question mark, you can actually see all the explanations about uh, a specific building block, right? So um, <clears throat> by checking CSV, what you get is uh, a CSV with index. So when you have multiple files, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they are numbered and file paths and file size. So this is what you get. So for example, when I come back here and then check detail in CSV, and then I come here to CSV, and then I just give, okay, um, I should explain a variable format, but let me come back to that. But I would say files, mm -hmm. and then um, this is it. And when I go, I'm going to just go view variable. This tool is allow you to view uh, what's con uh, what uh, you know contents of the variables. So let me. I think I'm going to just run it. Mm -hmm. Oh, before I run it, I'm going to maybe just close these guys. I think it doesn't really matter. But uh, oh, I'm not sure if I have PDF filing this. Let's make sure I have PDF filing this. A sample PDF. I have sample PDFs. Okay. All right. And so, can you just see, guy, when you mark these, will it only be these two operations that will run? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, it's called the um, partial test, and that's really nice. Uh, that's a nice feature as well. I think that um, we can test these things while we develop. Right. So anyway, and I just change. And I'll I just, just say, change. sorry, I'll just say hi to Autobase in the chat from Thailand. Nice to have you here in the stream watching Seagay's uh, magic. Sorry. So uh, uh, Anders, to, uh, to accommodate your request, you know, how this really works, um, I changed the uh, folder from, I just picked a, you know, a random folder before, but now I change a folder to this sample. PDF, this is a folder. And of course, I'm looking for a PDF um, file here. And I'm going to get a, a details in CSV and result type CSV. And I gave the CSV uh, a name. Uh, you know, CSV can have a name and uh, I say files. So when I run these two operations, well, first of all, Stu just packaged the, the software and gave it to Pam. And Pam is now, you know, for the, uh, when, when you run any operations for the first time, it's downloading it, uh, downloading the module and uh, uh, to my local PC, and then it's going to run, but it's going to take a little bit. Uh, bear with me for one second. 
<clears throat> but it looks extremely straightforward to to program these. Like we can drag drop, we can fill in parameters like some of us are used to. And um, when you package this one here, will it take? Will it just do it the first time? Yeah, just the first time. And uh, second time on, it's uh, uh, um, it's uh, uh, you don't have to do anything. Okay, hang on. Oh, what happened? So maybe I made a mistake. Let me go back to. It didn't catch the folder monitor. I'm monitoring this folder. Search for the PDF. This is good. Um, CSV files. Yeah, everything should be good. Let me run it one more time. Yep. And I will say hello to uh, for Mado Soto Linares from Peru. Hello and welcome to the stream. It's really nice to, to have you uh, all here from different parts of the world. Okay, I will switch to I will switch to you. It's always uh, a sweat with these live builds here. <laughs> Don't stress. We are. Um... No. And um, Amir says hello. Hello, Amir. Nice to have you here in the stream. It's really nice to see all of you in the chat. And uh, if you're here, and uh, just let us know that you're in the chat and maybe you want to tell where you're from in the world. Okay, so I got it. Uh, for some reason, it's it's not including the folder is not including uh, the PDF PDF yeah full five PDF. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I need to debug this, but. Uh, And uh, Nitin says hi from Toronto, Canada. Hello, Nitin. It's very nice to, to see you here as well. I think we are all around the world now. Sega in USA, oh. Autobase in Thailand, okay. A. Sullivan in Dublin, Fernando in Peru, Amir, we don't know. Nitin in Canada and I'm in Denmark. <clears throat> Well, I think uh, I need to uh, debug on this. Yeah, uh, no stress. We can just take the next example and then uh, I'm sure that we can. Um... Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's really drag and drop, setting the parameters. And then if you want to view what's inside the variables, you bring in this uh, view variables anytime. View variables is like a, a, in a software development. It's like a, 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 a trap, so you can actually pause and uh, uh, manipulate your variables and proceed. So that's a very convenient tool. So uh, what I wanted to show you was, you know, using folder monitor, you basically capture uh, what's inside the folder, and you find PDF and run Google Vision, and Google Vision returns uh, usually text file. So I can actually store that in the text file maybe and hand it over to um, maybe uh, Excel. So um, use like Excel tool, Excel advanced. And then from that, like you mentioned, um, you can actually insert that into a, a, a database or anything. So it's drag and drop, uh, re easy parameters, and, uh, uh, you know, this timeline right here is very much readable. You can communicate. It's very much readable. I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, a flow chart is readable, but timeline like this is very much readable. You can communicate and, uh, you know, what you want to do. Uh, if you're working in a group, uh, it's really uh, clear uh, your intentions, you know, what you want to do in the, uh, this uh, automation scenario. Cool, Sige. Tanat says hello from Thailand. So um, nice to have you here, Tanat, at the stream. And Sige, 
when we build these components, we can drag and drop them in. What do I do the day that I miss a component? Say I want to create my own custom component. Uh, what is that possible in Arcus Labs? Yeah, sure. So uh, that's exactly uh, number one reason people use our solution uh, because local solutions they are they have building blocks, but usually these building blocks are. Uh, built, developed, and released by a local vendor. Um, as opposed to that, we provide this POT SDK, SDK, which is available to everybody. Any Python engineers, entry-level Python engineers, they can uh, grab any Python solutions, what's available out there, or any original Python solution they, they built, and convert that into uh, operations, which is going to show up immediately in Stu's toolbox over here. And Stu, that is short for studio, correct? Right. Cool. So let me show you uh, the workflow. I'll come back to components. So uh, POT SDK, and your Python resources, engineer, and solution. And using that nine steps, and it, you beca it becomes a building block. Now, you can publish that into a public repository, which is our repository, going to be available to everybody uh, in the world. Or you keep that into your private repository. This bu building block is going to be only available to, to you or the, you know, the stu studio that you designate. So this is great for our implementation partners because they, their customers, uh, they have their very specific needs for automation, very proprietary solutions maybe, and they can actually build building, building blocks and add it to their private repository. And uh, you know, uh, this, they don't need to be available to everybody in the world, but having a private repository this is great because uh, it different, differentiate you. Our partner can be differentiate themselves and it really fits perfectly to their customers. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself, CK. So yesterday you showed us a really nice thing where you stepped into to a command prompt and uh, you, you grabbed some data and uh, put them into system B, which was a notepad. Do you have uh, some small, uh, uh, I will call it Christmas gifts for us today where we can see uh, what you can do? Yeah, sure. I'm a little bit nervous now because my <laughs> folder monitor didn't work. No, I don't no know problem. why this is, this is not working, but uh, let me uh, start from scratch. Okay. Um, I'm sure you will. Um, we can put in a comment under the video why afterwards why uh, what it's it probably just a comma or or yeah, something maybe that you. That's always, uh, I, I did a ton of them and I all, it always uh, happens when you when you go live with these, you can build yeah. thousands of them. Um, so that's no, no, no sweat. So what I can do is uh, uh, I can come here and uh, start the new uh, AutoRec. I'm going to show you AutoRec. And uh, that's how you usually start building your bot because AutoRec is going to capture your process and it's going to give you the foundation of your uh, bot. So now I come here and do you want do you want to create a new scenario? I say okay. And maybe you can tell me what a scenario is. Scenario is the um, automation software. Cool. Okay. So I come to uh, maybe click on this um, Chrome. So I clicked on my Chrome and then I add a new tab and say, that. and then I come to maybe my contact page 
include my name, oops, include my name, and comment. Hello world. Mm -hmm. And I stop my auto rec. What's going to give me? It gives me this. Uh, uh, it captured the process flow uh, elements, and uh, I clicked. At the, you know, I looked for this uh, uh, Chrome icon, and I clicked on it. And then what happened was oh, this is like a, over here. Please, uh, uh, this section right here, screenshot. This is like a slideshow. So you can actually communicate, oh, what you did, including it captures the application title, application name, and what you looked for, and where you clicked, and including shortcut keys. This is a keystroke and mouse moves. It captures all these. And so this is how you start your uh, building your automation scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So you can, and I can see it says image maps. Is that how you recognize web elements? Is that by image? That's that's correct. So uh, that's a very good uh, question, Anders. Autorec is basically um, capturing everything that's happening on the screen. So it's called image-based uh, scenario building and uh, a screen-based scenario building. So when you show this to a uh, low-code builder, what they do is okay, instead of, uh, you know, looking for this Chrome and going to, uh, you know, this plus sign and adding. So instead of doing that, maybe they can, they can make a suggestion like, no, 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 you should probably do just open browser, right? Open yeah. browser, you, you can start this. And then instead of, uh, um, uh, maybe, and you can probably just navigate to the contact page directly with them. Right. Whatever. So just, uh, you know, comment out, comment out or gray out, whatever you call it. Uh, these uh, number two through number seven, they are all commented out. So over here, what you need is come back to Chrome and then get this URL, grab this URL, give it to my open browser, and then just let's just close this right mm -hmm. I close this and when I uh, so I want to show it to you so maybe I'm going to just bring in this is only for showing purposes I'll just give like 10 sec uh, five seconds of delay so that, that you can actually uh, view it so I, I run it right so instead of navigating through uh, screen. Um, oh, yeah, okay. We didn't, uh... <laughs> okay. Well, it's it's actually working. Yeah. So, uh, so um, and waited for five five seconds and uh, back to studio because it was a test run. So instead of doing all this, you can actually replace that with this one operation. And which operation did you say? Open browser. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. That was, that was we opened the contact page, and then we could combine it with the the, five, the seven below steps or eight or how many we got there. Yeah, uh, we have one, uh, th one, two, three, four, five, six. So these now they they are not needed. So I can actually go delete them, and that's it. And if you but delete them by mistake, always we have a history. We, we can actually bring them back. Um, so all these history snapshots are here. Oh, that's cool. So we can easily go back in, in time. and yeah. Get, yeah. Well, you know, snapshot, that's a software term. So because, uh, uh, you know, many of our customers are non-software developers. So we basically put that uh, term, term history here and the historical uh, snapshots are here. Cool. It looks extremely, I would say, straightforward to figure out what these things does. I mean, drag in an open browser and then 
if I if I happen to let's say I just wanted to open the browser and I didn't know the name of that operation, what would my approach be? Let's say I, I know I could uh, do this uh, recording, yeah. but let's say I wanted to find it here. Could I look in categories or something? Sure. Uh, so uh, operations right here, toolbox has a search uh, box right here, mm -hmm. and maybe you want to just say browser, right? And yeah. open browser show up. Like, uh, uh, and then you, you forget a specific, maybe Microsoft technology you want to use. Maybe you want to go like MS and Microsoft. Okay, we have MS Aja. This is a Microsoft AI and we have Word. Um, and yeah, so um, keywords here and you can actually come to your um, uh, building block that you're looking for. Cool. And what if I wanted to click something? Let's say I want to click something on the web page. What would click what something would on the web page? Well, so uh, two ways to do that. Of course, maybe uh, easier way, is easier or like a software way is mm -hmm. to use HTML action or JavaScript, or you can actually look for specific button on screen and locate image and click. It gives you. Uh, it's really easy. Just go grab like that, you know, and then um, you want to click here, for example, free trial, and that's it. This is that. That's how you do that. Or simply you bring in one of the Windows action. These are Windows actions, and yeah. you do the same thing. So uh, clicking, there are so many different ways to do that. Which one do you prefer of these three? Well, so um, if you are building a lunchtime bot. You know, you want to uh, do something while you're uh, outside having lunch. Uh, these two, these two operations are very easy to build. Like immediately, you can automate something. And uh, uh, the weakness of these two, uh, when uh, UI changes over time, they uh, they need to be recalibrated. So, but during the lunchtime, UI doesn't change, right? So uh, it, it's going to be uh, perfectly functional. So for long term, I would recommend these two operations. And that, but then again, then I'm over in the code. I prefer low code. So I, I think for me personally, I will go with click and focus. I think that one uh, seems very easy to, uh, to understand yep. for me. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's if preferences. If you carefully design your bot, you know, a lot of people say image based, UI based navigation is uh, not stable, but that's not necessarily true. If you really carefully design it, and if you carefully design exception handlers, error treatment, it can be really stable. Yeah, definitely. And of course, also, sometimes I also use uh, JavaScript. Uh, but I, I try to just do these uh, clicks myself. Yeah, well, JavaScript, you know, the, uh, these days, you can actually ask ChatGPT to give me JavaScript and it gives yeah. you JavaScript. <laughs> and it works, like in... Yeah, it runs. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, that's a good tip out there. And CK, I actually built my first Argus Labs bot today. I was impressed how easy it was to sign up or on the Argus Lab page. I could just uh, click free trial in the upper right corner, I think I clicked. And then I was ready. What took the most was to receive an email uh, confirming it was me. And then I was up and running in, in two minutes. And I could build my first bot dragging in. And it was quite easy to understand the parameters. It was, I didn't build anything advanced. It was just to, to see how easy it was to, to set up. Yeah, that, that's a great comment. Thank you so much for trying. And the reason why we say our tool, it takes 10 minutes to set up, 90 minutes to learn. Well, maybe five minutes to receive your email, uh, <laughs> but uh, but then uh, 90 minutes to learn. We have a video contents over here under resources, 90 minute training video. Maybe uh, we have like 30 videos, five minute uh, videos, very short. And uh, you can actually fast forward them if you want. Uh, so it's very easy to learn the principles of uh, you know how you use a platform. What's the price of these uh, 90 minute course? Uh, 90 minute course is free of charge. It's uh, if you try to train yourself or you know uh, ask questions, it's uh, you know we we are happy to answer questions, no charge. That's cool. And do you have a, a community? Let's say that I usually when I do these things, I I don't like documentation. I just like to to do things, try Arcus Labs myself, and. 
try to drag things in on these things. Do you have a community or something, or where can I post my questions? Yeah. Or? So that's uh, uh, still when you open still this help menu and uh, request support. This yeah. is the uh, really uh, probably the number one um, tool you have to get help. Uh, we are now starting to build our community. Probably we're going to use uh, Discord. And nice. uh, a lot of uh, uh, users, they request uh, uh, having this community. So uh, we're just starting now. I will. Uh, we will post a link uh, uh, below in the comments whenever uh, the community is ready. In the we will certainly do that. Yeah. Cool, CK. It's very nice to to see how easy easy it is. And um, let's say that um, I also you also mentioned a brief that we we can do REST API calls. Um, how easy it is that you don't have to make it? But what which actions would I have to use to make a REST API call? I tried it myself. Yeah, again API. Um, you want to do APIs, and there are so many API uh, tools. And what you're looking for is maybe either one of these. Uh, API requests, REST API. So these are the tools that uh, allow you to uh, use API calls. So uh, yeah, that's that. And But if you intend to use this specific building box uh, repeatedly, if you want to make it portable, I very much recommend take the API, usually come with sample code, which is in Python and release that into your private repository. Then it's manageable, reusable, dispatchable. It's uh, it's very handy. Cool. And hello, Balram Singh in the chat. Nice to, to see you uh, joining as well. Sige, you have a lot of fans uh, around the world, I can tell. Good to know. Thank you so yeah. much. And Sige, if we want to get started, let's say I'm, maybe we can talk in both cases, both where we are a company and then a developer. If I'm a developer, I want to get started. Then I take the 90 minute course and I download Argus Labs, which is free in 60 days. So mm -hmm. I can get a lot of practice for free. What should I do from there? You, can you recommend me something to do? Uh, yes. Uh, so like you said, we have this button right here, free trial which takes you to this section of our website. And I actually and have a question here, uh, CK. If I'm, I wanted to, to develop uh, early on, which one of these should I take? Just the old in one? All in one, yeah, cool. all in one, yeah. Uh, because, uh, okay, I should explain to you the components, right? So studio, I've been showing you the studio and PAM is short for process automation module and uh, PAM is the execution agent. So Stu, you make your scenario file and scenario file is going to be given to PAM and PAM runs it. And not only running uh, the automation scenario, PAM has a feature to communicate everything, all the activities, logs, and everything back to supervisor. And supervisor is the one that's going to show you a supervisor look like this. It's got the dashboard. Uh, you have your list of scenarios, PAM, scheduling, all these uh, you know features to manage and provide governance. And the da dashboard comes with the uh, a troubleshooting feature like this. And Wow. I have all these, uh, you know, uh, scenarios which uh, was executed yesterday. And uh, when I go to, like, for example, this guy, it gives me what happened, right? This including all these uh, uh, screenshot. And uh, so from one location, you can manage many PAMs worldwide. And you know exactly what happened, successful, failure, everything. So that's supervisor. That's supervisor right here. And of course, POTSDK uh, component number four, this is the most important one because we are local Python, fully customizable. I already explained this POTSDK to you. Yeah, you did. So just to understand it correctly, I install a PAM on each of the machines where I want to run my robots on, mm -hmm. correct? Right, 
Right. Physical machine, virtual machine. Um, yeah, anyway, local That's, cloud. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And that was from a developer standpoint, what I should do here, download the tool, start playing around, take the 90 minutes uh, course. And right. then we can probably build another thing. Which, uh, what do you really say? What are the the companies that use Argos Labs? Where's your custom customer base? Uh, so yeah, great question again on this. Uh, so use case. When you come to use case, we list <clears throat> some of the use case use cases uh, here. And as you can see, customers, um, we have all kinds of different industries. Um, I would say we are in, we are very popular among manufacturing companies, uh, retail, logistics, and we have some energy companies, um, local governments, of course. Um, so all kinds of different uh, industries. And then business processes, you know, we do all kinds of different processes we automate, all kinds of different solutions we automate, and a lot of uh, hours we're saving for them. Yeah, so so really a, a mix. And where are we in the world? Is it worldwide or in the States, EU? What would you say here? Yeah, we are we are worldwide, Asia, Europe. Um, India is one of the very active market for us. And uh, uh, US, of course. Yeah. Cool. And James says hello in the chat. Hello, James. Nice to have you here in the session. So, um, and Gurav says, well, best teacher mentor is none other than Anders Jensen. Thank you, Gurav. And I'm happy to have a, a real wizard here with um, uh, with CK. And actually, we have a question, CK, from Balram Singh. He says, do we have different types of bot runner in Argos? We do have uh, different types, yes. Um, we have Windows Windows runner. And we have Linux, and uh, one of our um, actually multiple our, our clients are running um, Runner or Pam on Android, wow. and uh, yeah, we have a case where automation is being run on Raspberry Pi, so our footprint is very small. Badram Singh, I hope that was answer enough. Uh, for you otherwise just let us know in the chat um, if that covers it thank you ck do you have something here in in uh, towards the end that you can some cool thing you can show us in the tools itself the, the studio uh well so the cool thing well tomorrow uh, i think we have a session tomorrow too and uh, our plan is to show everybody a live demonstration as to building the intelligent document processing uh, scenario, yeah. so that that's that's tomorrow, and I so think that's going build, to be really cool. Yeah, and to the viewers out there, we'll build a cool end-to-end -end Argos Lab robot tomorrow, where we right. will CK will build the most. I will ask all the dumb questions, and um, you can ask all the clever questions out there in um, in the chat, and then uh, we'll make sure that CK he he helps us understand how everything works. So CK. I want to say thanks to you for joining this session. I want to say thanks to all of you viewers out there joining this Arcus Labs session. I'm so glad that you all help making this um, making this uh, uh, available to uh, to me. So uh, if you like this session, you can help us a lot by giving it a thumbs up. That will make the video come out to more people in the community. We actually have a, a last question, Sigay. That will be the last of the session. Sure. Balram Singh says, uh, then is it possible to deploy the automation unattended in Azure or AWS server? Yes, people do that all the time, unattended. Uh, basically, that's, a, again, great question. Thank you so much. We are Python. So whenever you want to deploy Python, we are deployable. deployable. Aja, uh, Google Cloud, any AWS, any virtual machines, unattended, yeah, that's fully deployable. Cool, thank you. And I hope that was answer to you, Balram Singh. Sika, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm looking forward for tomorrow where you will build an end-to-end -end process with document processing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the 